What's up, y'all? Um, so I saw a few comments of some uh, questions that uh, people wanted to know. One of the big ones was uh, people like DM'd me, a bunch of people, basically saying, like, why didn't I buy uh, Bible paper in bulk? Why was I just stealing pages from bookstores or whatever? Um, so basically, like, once I found out that Bible paper worked as well as it did, um, I looked up you know, wholesale manufacturers online. And I found that, uh, of basically there's only like a few different companies in the world that actually manufacture, uh, the, the right type of Scrita paper. Um, and you know, you have to buy it in giant reams. Um, you know, it comes on a pallet. It's, it's mainly, they, they sell wholesale to like book publishing companies. So they, they're these giant reams. Um, and at the time, you know what I mean, I, I started to spend, uh, a good amount of money in Knoxville, where I was living, um, and really it just kind of sketched me out, the idea of ordering a pallet of Bible paper, um, you know, I didn't have, like, front businesses or anything, I mean, of course I probably could, all these people on, on the comments are like, oh, I would have started a phony business and this and that, it's like, at the time, I was just, you know, traveling around, spending this money, so I didn't want to order, you know, have a, a fucking freight truck pull up at a residential house and drop off a, a pallet of Bible paper that I'd have to sign for. You know, I, I was thinking in my mind that the Secret Service might, you know, put two and two together and, and realize what kind of paper I was using to make these bills and, you know, potentially set me up if I was ordering it in bulk. Um... So basically, going to bookstores and just taking the paper was uh, the safest route. Um, and, and once I kind of went to all the bookstores and used up that resource, I started uh, buying Bibles from maintenance men at hotels. And, uh, you know, at the time, my my ex-wife, my, my current wife back then, whatever, we're separated now, but she had a, was running like a non-profit charity that took donations of diapers and clothes and Bibles and distributed them to families in need. So I had a source of Bibles that way. So basically I was able to get just about as much Bible paper as I needed the ways that I was acquiring it. Um, so I'm sure eventually if I wouldn't have gotten caught, if eventually those resources would have dried up, I would have figured something out and probably ordered it um, in bulk. But at the time, you know what I mean, the way I was doing it just seemed to be the safest uh, safest route. So, um, one person did ask what printers I used. Um, I used a few different kinds. So, like, when I first started doing it, you know, I was in a bad financial situation, so I didn't have a lot of money to invest. Uh, like in equipment. So the first printer I used was a MG series Canon. It's like cheap, real cheap. They sell at Walmart. But actually that's the best printer, one of the best printers that I could have used in the beginning because it's got a, a feature to where you can print out, uh, it prints out little samples so if, like you have an image, you print out all these different little samples and all these different color schematics. So then that enabled me to color match, you know, the background color to that. And once I color matched it to all these little samples and found the right sample print, it had the list of color schematics like magenta, cyan, from a negative 50 to positive 50. And I could adjust the color settings based on color matching to that sample. So I used the MG series for that to color match. Once I had all the color schematics down for all the different layered files, um, I continued to use the MG series uh, Canon just to print the background color just because ink was cheap. I didn't need a high resolution uh, printer to print the background color so I continued using the MG series and I upgraded to the TS series Canon. Um, and I used that for the green treasury seal and serial numbers as well as the strip and watermark and for a time I used it for the black work of the bill as well. Eventually then I upgraded to a Canon Pro 100 which is an even higher resolution. It's a great printer. Um, 
So as I upgraded, I kept the printers that I was using. So then I had multiple cycles. While the MG series printer was printing the background color, as soon as that was done, I put the background color in the TS series and print the green treasury seal and serial numbers. And then when that was done, I put it in the Canon Pro 100 and print all the black work. So basically I had three printers running all the time. One was printing the background color, one was printing the treasury seal and serial numbers, and one was printing the black work. So they were just all going at once. Um, another one said, like, how did I get such rich, rich black color? Um, and basically, real money is printed on an Italia press. So it's really high pressure, and the ink uh, goes into these en engraved metal plates. So it's actually inside the indentations of this plate, and then it pushes down on high pressure. So the ink actually stands above the paper with real money. And that's where the texture comes from, and like rich black colors. So I basically just used the Canon Pro 100, which printed rich black colors, but um, it didn't have texture like the Intaglio Press. So that's where I used the clear glue pen, the embossing fine tip pen, to kind of give it texture. Um, but yeah, Canon Pro 100 is an amazing printer, and you'd be surprised what uh, what it could do. If you had took a magnifying glass to my bills, the, the micro printing would be kind of blurry under a magnifying glass. To the naked eye, it looked fucking perfect. But, I mean, not very many cashiers have a magnifying glass and actually examine these bills. To the naked eye, you could see micro printing. If you put the magnifying glass over it, you could still see, you could read the microprinting. It wasn't as crisp as a real bill, obviously, but it was definitely close enough um, for what I was doing. Um, see, one person asked what, uh, what the biggest order I made was. Um, so I tried to keep it like under 10,000. So some, every person... Um, I'd sell money to, they all, as soon as they found out what I was doing, they'd instantly be like, I want, print me a million dollars, you know, and it's just like, that would take a long time, um, and, you know, if I'm selling this fucking gangbanger from Detroit, $10,000 for 2500 I'm not really scared of being robbed by him, because it's 20, you know, it's 2500 bucks, I was dealing with people with a lot of money, $2,500 isn't a huge amount. If I was to sell somebody a million dollars worth of counterfeit money and spend months printing all this all day every day for months and then go to sell them a million dollars for say 200 grand he could just fucking shoot me and take it 200,000 is a lot of money to rob you know that either way so I tried to keep to minimize risk and just the amount of time it took I tried to keep everything around ten thousand um, dollars I did fill an order for twenty thousand a couple times but yeah I think that was the most in one order that I did was about 20 grand um, let's see one person asked how did I glue them together so I uh, basically had a light board it's a piece of glass with LED lights behind it so you could uh, put the bills down and see right through them on this glass so I basically take one like the, the back side of the bill and just missed on a little bit of Gorilla Glue Spray and then set it down on this light board so you could see through it. And then I took the front of the bill and just lined it up because I could see through both both pieces with one side with the glue and then just put uh, the front of the bill down in the corner, lined up right, and then take a squeegee and just squeegee them down. Um, the Gorilla Glue Spray uh, holds pretty well. So once you squeegee it pretty good, it's gonna hold. Um, sometimes I would then spray a little bit of Gorilla Glue on like a piece of plastic and take the edges, uh, like the perimeter of the bill, and just kind of rub it in just to kind of have a seal on the outside so they didn't peel on the corners or whatever. But for the most part, uh, using the light board to line it up and Gorilla Glue spray, squeegeeing them together, worked, uh, worked great. Um, one person asked what the biggest hurdles were in counterfeiting and passing. So I would say the biggest hurdle in, in the actual production of them would be the thickness. 
Um, it became, I got it down to a pretty, pretty fine science, but if you spray just even the slightest bit too much Gorilla Glue and squeegee them, it'll be too thick. And if you don't spray enough, then, then they do peel. So it became a perfect amount of space spraying just this right mist, just, just enough. And you have to distribute it evenly. So <clears throat> it became, you know, I had to learn that muscle memory and exactly how much to spray, you know, the right mist. Um, and the, the biggest hurdle that I still didn't even master was getting the weight right. Some drug dealers I've, I've came across, if they thought the bill was fake, they'd throw it on a digital scale. $100 bills or all bills weigh one gram exactly. It was really hard to get all of the bills at one gram. Um, you know, that, that's really hard to do. <laughs> and I, I'd never perfected that. I've only ran across one dealer that actually weighed one of my bills and found and, and talked shit saying, oh, this bill's fake. It weighs 1.1 gram or whatever. And I'm like, oh, your fucking scale's fucked up. Calibrate your scale, you know what I mean? Whatever, but yeah, that was a hard hurdle to, you know, to, to, to beat um, was getting the bills to weigh perfectly one gram, all of them. Um, and the biggest hurdle in passing the bills, I would say, was uh, <clears throat> probably like just uh, finding, the, so like I'd only pass the bills at certain corporations. There was probably like 50 different businesses that were big corporations that I just felt comfortable passing them in, like Walmart's, Kroger, Dollar General, Family Dollar, um, Dollar Tree, but Dollar Tree, the manager has to come and break the bill and take it in the back which I, I went to a lot of Dollar Trees, but I didn't like doing it just because it was an ordeal to break a $100 bill. But basically, like, Walmart, uh, all, like, grocery stores, Publix, Kroger, Food Cities were good. Uh, Dollar General, Family Dollar. I went to a lot of Ace Hardwares. I learned not to go to Lowe's or Ross <clears throat> or certain. They all had bill validator machines. So, like... You know, Walgreens, CVS, CVS is good, they use the black light, but, you know, my bills passed that test, so, CVS, Walgreens, uh, Publix, Food City, Kroger, Walmart, um, I went to, a, I started going to a lot of O'Reilly's and, uh, like, auto parts stores, those were all those chains that I, I preferred going to, so once I went to a city, I'd Google all those businesses and hit up each one, and then, I'd try to go back the next day and hit him up again, and the next day and hit him up again. But then after that, not go to him again, because eventually those bills <clears throat> that I passed will hit the bank and they'll find out they were fake. So you've got a window of about five days to, to break as many of these bills as you can in these stores. So basically going to a city, hitting up all those different uh, corporations over and over and over again in a five-day window, once that window's up, it's risky to go back to them because then they found out the bill was fake and they may be looking f out for counterfeit bills or whatever. So, you know, that's why I started traveling around. I mean, after I spent maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars in Knoxville, I went to Atlanta, <clears throat> did it there, and then Chattanooga, and then, you know, I went up to Lexington and I'd go with my, you know, people I was dealing with up to Cleveland and Detroit while they re-upped those bus bills, but eventually I went to all these cities, so naturally I lived in Knoxville, so I'd start breaking more in Knoxville and doubling up at the stores, um, and that's, that was the biggest hurdle, was once I already went to these stores multiple, multiple times, multiple times, I'd go back, and then it started to get kind of sketchy, um, <clears throat> but yeah, just basically, you know, traveling around and finding new stores that I hadn't already been to, um, was the biggest, uh, biggest hurdle in passing them. I hope uh, I answered your questions all good.